Kincaid, the morning, good morning, Pittsburgh. I'm your anchor woman, Devin Williams, and as you can see, it's casual Friday. But more important news today, we have a special guest, Joel Schooler, here in the studio to give us a brief presentation on polio, its vaccine, and how it's affected the world. Joel, get in here. Thank you, Devin. Fifty-five years ago, last month, the cure for poliomyelitis, otherwise known as polio, was found. Now, fifty-five years later, the effects of this great moment in history are still present in this glorious city of Pittsburgh. So, why don't you tell the viewers at home exactly what the book says polio is? That's a good idea. I should definitely give the Merck Manual's opinion. Polio! is a disease, also known as infantile paralysis, which is a highly contagious, sometimes fatal, viral infection that affects the nerves and can produce permanent muscle weakness, paralysis, and other symptoms. It was also highly dangerous in kids, which is why it's known as infantile. It plagued the nation during the first half of the 1900s. Even President Franklin Delano Roosevelt caught the virus. By 1952, there were 60,000 cases and 3,000 deaths. 60,000? 60,000. 3,000 deaths? 3,000 deaths. Wow. Wow, indeed. However, it was most severe to rich kids. And the non-poor kids had built up an immunity because they lived in less sanitary conditions. Acute... I mean, the poor kids. The poor kids had the immunity. The rich kids didn't. Yeah, the poor kids... Had Noah had the immunity, had the immunity. The rich kids did not, which is an interesting fact. A cure needed to be found. The iron lung, a negative pressure ventilator, was used to help those patients who could not breathe on their own because polio attacks the nerves and you couldn't breathe. But this did not last as a solution. So, in 1938, President Roosevelt founded the March of Dimes to fight polio. What's the March of Dimes? The March of Dimes was a organization developed by Roosevelt to help fund polio. It was designed so people would send one dime to the White House and you'd go help fight polio. However, it was so successful that the mail rooms were overloaded with dimes in the mail and could not get important correspondence through. Whoa. However, sadly, tragedy struck. A failed vaccine was not, that was not sponsored by the program infected all those who were in the trial. This made the realization that they must proceed slowly to prevent any more deaths. They did this by screening all of the new applicants to the program, which leads us to the hero of polio, Jonas Salk, born in New York City on October 28, 1914. He moved to Pittsburgh in 1947 to work at UPMC, great school. He built his own lab, li almost literally from scratch, to study polio. In 1948, John Enders of the Children's Hospital of Boston, yeah, Boston. developed a successfully cultivated polio virus in human tissue, a momentous step that would allow them to actually have a cure for polio. Because originally it was thought the polio could only be developed in spinal tissue, which was hard to use. The vaccine was also known as in, was also known as inactivated polio virus vaccine. This is what Salk was trying to make a killed virus. In 1952, Salk tested this first polio vaccine. He is quoted to have been having said, Enders threw me a forward pass and I caught it. This angered many scientists because they didn't believe that they weren't given any credit. Now all that was left were the mass trials. In 1954, at the local DT Watson school, the salt vaccine was tested. So polio was finished off in 1954? Not exactly. In 1954, the field test trials for the polio vaccine were started. The p kids were told they were polio pioneers. They were told pioneers meant to try something new. 
Over a million needles were used, though this trial was opposed by fellow Albert Sabin, saying it was unethical. Then, tragedy struck. A kid came down to polio after getting a shot. This almost ruined the tests. Oh, that's too bad. However, it was found the virus was not completely killed in that dose. Tests would soon resume, and it was a success. Oh, that's good. Yep. And when asked who the, owned the patent, he replied, the people do. Can you patent the sun? Not that I know of. But it would be found that the injunction was not enough. So, Albert Sabin, who always maintained that a live virus would be better, developed an oral medication that could be taken much more easily and without the need for painful needles. It was this medication that would finally eradicate polio from the world. Hmm, very interesting. But how does that affect us? I mean, we're obviously all inoculated from the disease, and we won't have to live with AIDS like the iron lung. I get what you're saying. And it should be nothing more evident than in this city of Pittsburgh. If you look out the window now, you can see a booming university city. Although the city wasn't always as technologically gifted, the city used to be the U.S. steel industry capital up until the late 1970s until it collapsed. The frontier in which Salk had claimed, just like the Americans did, to the West. The universities started the boom. Though this may all seem coincidental, the correlations just may be too close to call. Alright, well that was very interesting, Joel. Thank you. And to you parents watching this program, make sure your kids have gotten the vaccine for polio. We don't want another epidemic in the United States. Now, stay tuned for sports. Sports.